The Buffalo State Bengals went into Wright Stadium looking to push their win streak to three games after a big fourth quarter helped them defeat Utica 34-19 in Week 8. For the Hartwick Hawks, it was the last home game of the season and a chance to end a three-game losing streak after getting blanked by Salisbury 17-0 in Week 7. Hartwick got the ball to start the game and drove down the field, but Alex Tesoriro missed a 36-yard field goal wide right, just a bit outside. On the Bengals' second play of the game, Casey Cass found Mike Doherty streaking up the field and the duo hooked up for a 75-yard touchdown pass. Once the defender fell to the ground, it was off to the races for Doherty, giving the Bengals an early 7-0 lead. Hartwick answered right back though on his 28-yard pass from John Garcia to Frankie Molina to even the score at 7. This would start a chess match between Molina and Jeff McDuffie for the entire game. The Bengals would retake the lead in the first play with a 68-yard pass from Casey Kaz to Mike Doherty for the duo's second touchdown of the game and Doherty's first multi-touchdown game of his career. Keep in mind the Bengals have run just three plays to score 14 points. In the second quarter, John Garcia goes back to targeting Jeff McDuffie and finds Frankie Molina once again in the end zone for the touchdown, 9 to score up at 14. Later in the second quarter, Rich Pete finds a hole and breaks free for a 37-yard gain deep into Hawks territory. Man is he fun to watch when he has room to run. Two plays later, Rich Pete bounces it out to the right for an 11-yard score and a 21-14 lead. Pete had 71 rushing yards on this drive alone. Once again, though, the Hawks would respond, this time on a 22-yard touchdown pass from John Garcia to the tight end Sean Eichner. This pass is Garcia's last highlight of the game as the Bengals would begin to pull away. On 3rd and 10, Casey Kaz gets the first down with a 49-yard pass to Sherman Nelson down the sideline. Nelson got plenty of yards after the catch with some nice footwork keeping him in bounds until Chris Hoos pushed him out. Two plays later, Casey Kaz finds Sherman Nelson again, but this time in the end zone for a 26-yard score as he narrowly misses hitting the fence. Bengals take their fourth lead, 28-21. John Garcia tries to go after Jeff McDuffie on the next drive. But thanks to some pressure up the middle by Brian Green, Garcia overthrows Frankie Molina into the waiting hands of McDuffie. Buffalo State would capitalize on the turnover with Rich Pete bouncing it out to the right and punching it in for the 4-yard score. It gave the Bengals a 35-21 lead heading into halftime. On the opening second half kickoff, Mike Doherty cuts to the other side of the field and thanks to a nice block by Joe Oka, he's able to make two defenders miss and route to a 73-yard return to the Hawks' 15-yard line. The Bengals would push their lead to 21 two plays later on a 6-yard score by Rich Pete, his third of the game matching a career high. On Hartwick's next possession, John Garcia gets hit as he throws by Shaq Frederick, resulting in an underthrow to Frankie Molina. Jeff McDuffie anticipates the throw and jumps higher than Molina for the interception. From there, nobody is going to stop McDuffie as he races down the sideline to give the Bengals a 28-point lead. On the Bengals' next drive, Rich Pete tries to switch the ball to his left hand, but Joe Cini knocks it loose. Brian Schweitzer picks it up and returns it for a 9-yard score. Rich Pete would make up for the fumble on the next drive, diving over the pile for his fourth touchdown of the game. The score increased the Bengals' lead back to 28 points. Alex Devins made a 20-yard field goal at the start of the fourth quarter, and the Bengals put their backups in soon after. Jeff McDuffie got his third interception on the next drive with a nice one-handed snag. With three interceptions, McDuffie tied a school record with six other players. Hartwick went to their backups as well, and Keegan Corbett scored on a QB sneak. Hartwick tried going for two, but failed, keeping the score at 59-34. Despite being down four scores, Hartwick decided to do an onside kick, and thanks to a basketball-type pick from Chris Hooser, Frankie Molina was able to recover it. Hartwick drove down the field, and Nick Knauer punched it in for a one-yard score to make it 59-41. Hartwick kicked off normally and the Bengals need it to win the game 59-41. With the win, Buffalo State improves to 5-4, assuring themselves of a 500 or better record for three straight seasons, while Hartwick drops their four straight to fall to 4-4. Four four. Casey Kaz completed 80% of his passes for 347 yards and three scores. Kaz actually broke two records in the game. He passed Dan Sansonesi for career rushing yards by a quarterback with 795 and he broke Chris Henry's season completions record with 175. Rich Pete rushed for 132 yards and 4 scores, and Mike Doherty had 4 catches for 158 yards and 2 scores. Up next, the post-game reaction with Jerry Boys, who just finished coaching his 200th game with Buffalo State. You're only able to continue to have fun at this because of the, the young men that's, that are surrounding you on the sideline and, and the staff. And uh, You know, I'm back to, to doing what I, I love, uh, coaching young men out on a football field uh, and along the ways hopefully they learn some things about uh, really about what it takes to be successful on and off the field. Your quarterback Casey Katz ended up setting the completions record today 
He's really close to setting the, the attempts record in a season. How does he compare to your quarterback? Uh, I believe it was Chris Henry. Well, AJ, I've had uh, four significant uh, quality quarterbacks. Uh, and Jimmy Waggle, Tracy Bacon, Chris Henry, and now Casey Katz. Uh, tough to compare a little bit, and that would be a little bit unfair, but I, but I uh, have to say that I'm extremely impressed with, with Casey because of his overall abilities as a quarterback. Uh, not just the, the qualities to throw the ball on that, uh, but, but to lead this team down, down the field, run and pass. Uh, he has a very, very uh, great command over the offense. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's tough to, to, to look at statistics and say any one of them was, was the top guy, but uh, Casey is certainly uh, an extremely quality young man. Casey, you ended up breaking the completions record for the most in the season. What does that record mean to you? I mean, this team passed a lot this season. They also ran the ball as well, but you guys were really effective. Yeah. Um, that was one thing we focused on um, all season is taking what the defense gives us, whether it's the pass or the run, and Hartwick likes to stack the box. Um, so we were able to air it out a little bit today, and we had success running the ball we needed to, which was huge, and they did try stopping the pass. So it's just a testament to our offense how dynamic we are. Specifically in today's game, though, I mean, you have three touchdowns. Rich Pete ends up having four rushing touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. What was it about today's game? Um, I think... You know, a lot of the, the older guys realize you now this is our last road game, so we came out with the right attitude, which you saw from the opening couple drives, that we're ready to play. And, um, Rich Pete um, is a guy who he competes no matter what. Like at the end of the Alfred game, when he stripped that ball to give us a chance to win, Rich Pete always competes, and he's got the, the attitude that he's not going to be tackled, and if he gets the ball, he's going to score. And you saw that really, really well today. The O-line blocked unbelievable, both on passes and rushes. Today was Coach Boy's 200th game as head coach of Buffalo State. Yeah. Are you surprised by that? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a lot of games to be coaching. I imagine he's going to lose a couple of years due to the stress of coaching on his life. But, um, no, it's awesome for him to be coaching for that many years to get 200 games in is really incredible. I'm glad we got the W for him. Uh, we just stay focused. Like, we, like they, they got up on us early, and we just had like we had to talk on the sideline, and we came back ready to go. Uh, I already knew they were going to do it because they beat me down twice. So I was like, so I just got ready, like, and just started baiting them deep. And then after they, after they, after they finally got 34 points, they decided to, on, to do an onside kick and try to score, even though they were down four scores at that point. Uh, what, does, what do you think? What do you think about that? Well, personally, we probably did the same thing because any like, there's like, you never know anything could happen in football. Like, they thought they'd come back, they thought they, they had a pride, but we stayed focused and we finished the game. Off.